Alrighty, hello everyone, Busy Gamerhead back again, and I have a question for you. How do you fix a broken tomato? With tomato paste. There you go. Dad joke of the episode, thanks for stopping by. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so we're at the the, uh, the end of the, the game, I'm thinking. Um, we have quite a few character stories to go through. We're going to go through those together, and that's probably going to be the whole of this episode. So if you're not interested in that, again, um, that's uh, uh, up to you guys to you know stick around and see what I choose, see what the, the character development is, and everything like that. But I have a feeling that's going to be the whole episode. I really do appreciate everyone who does stick around for these episodes, and I really enjoyed uh, my playthrough of this game. Uh, this is going to be probably the outro uh, for this series. Um, I'm thinking that we probably have maybe another hour and a half to two hours of gameplay. That's going to be uh, with my format right now, you know, the span of several weeks. So uh, you'll see some posts online about uh, what game I might want to pick up next. And I usually ask the community to vote on that. So please do uh, uh, subscribe to the channel if you are at all interested in directing the content here. Uh, I have a couple of ideas, and I would love to hear from you on any games that you would recommend me play. But without any further ado, we're going to go through these character stories. Wow, we have quite a few for everyone. I don't know if the these end up being like you choose one and you don't get access to any of the other ones, or if you don't like you choose a like pick an adventure book kind of thing. But we'll go through all the ones that we can. Rowan harbors doubts about his station, but Sarah Noah reminds him that he is a noble in his own way. I do like their Roland. connection. What are you doing out here? There's hardly a better place to become lost in one's thoughts. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. This is where he was supposedly presumed dead, at least by scenes. I suppose. However, if aught weighs on your mind, it may serve you better to turn to a friend. Hmm. Then let me ask, do you believe me too immature for my station? <laughs> so there's this doubt. Uh, one sec. Okay, OBS was acting up again. All right. No, I don't think you're Not immature. at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. But the other nobles loved to gossip of my disinterest in politics and intrigue. And mocked my love of hawking. Oh, when we started this game, yeah, he was kind of the aloof second son. The second born, and now he's actually the king. I totally forgot about that. You said it yourself. Gossip and sniping, nothing more. Hmm. Pay no mind to nobles and their petty judgments. The people who matter, your subjects, hold you dearly in their hearts. For the most part. Stories abound of their love for you. Mm. Maybe. Hey, go peddle your junk somewhere else. And why would I do that, my good sir? I see no reason to forego such a bustling avenue simply to please a stranger. A stranger? You're posted in front of my damn shop. You're stealing my customers from right under my nose. That's true. Oh, I am? I'm not sure your lack of customers could be blamed on me. Surely the proprietor bears some responsibility for... Oh, that's just... What bickering is this? None of your business, Welp. Now leave us to our negotiations. <laughs> prince Roland? Is that really you? A prince, you say? Well, I... <laughs> A distinguished gentleman such as yourself must be mortified to have your customers bear witness to this childish bickering. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, your highness. My temper got the best of me. There you go. And you, merchant. If you mean to trade in Glenbrook, I trust you have procured the proper licenses and approvals. I, well, the process takes some days, you see. Pardon, your highness. Then your business shall have to wait some days, it seems. Shall I summon a member of the King's Guard to explain the law in detail? <laughs> no, there'll be no need of that, highness. I'll just be on my way. Yep. Goodbye. 
thank you, Prince Roland. Come visit any time, and I'll let you have your pick of my wares. Oh, that's nice. But he's the one who saw it. Sarah knows the one who saw it. Huh. I don't know if that speaks volumes for his character or more just respecting and protecting due process. Oh well. Your place has always been with your people. You could walk down the main avenue and settle disputes with a single word. <laughs> don't tell me you were watching. They were petty arguments, nothing more. As petty as they might have been, you were happy to do it. What better proof of royalty is there than that? Yeah, I mean, that'd be nice if that's the But it wasn't the, uh, because I was wise that I solved their problems. It was my name and status that let my words wait. Hmm. How do you imagine a kingdom with not a single dissatisfied soul would look? Oh, jeez. Hmm. That's a difficult thing to imagine. Mm-hmm. Indeed. I suppose the best one can hope for is to do what we can. While we can. That's all you can do as a king. Well, we can start envisioning such a nation. That one day we might build it. Together. I like the sound of that. No doubt the answers we seek lie ahead. So long as we stay honest with ourselves. And so long as we work together. You and I, Sarah Noah. I don't know. I feel like... There's definitely some room for growth for both characters. The problem... Oh, hey, little uh, achievement for that. Okay, we've viewed all of Roland's uh, stories. That's good, awesome. I wonder if we'll view a bunch more. That's what I mean by we're pretty close to the outset. So, you know, a little bit of idle banter in between the, the story sets, but uh, I'm a lead with the company I work for, an engineering group, and you're never going to be making everyone happy. You're always going to be compromising. That's the biggest thing as a leader that I've found ability to compromise or find that middle ground even if it's not middle for everyone it's middle overall and always trying to work with people shows that you have the capacity for kindness and as well as the direction to move the team in the ways it needs to move to get the job done so on to Frederica. Frederica decides to cook a meal for Sarah Noah, but even the best laid plans can all arrive. Oh, a little bit of comedic relief. Okay, we had a little heavy dose of things. Now we're gonna get a little light-hearted uh, story moment, notes. Do you have a moment, Oh, Frederica, is something the matter? Everything, well, I don't know how to cook. I invited Sarah Noah to have dinner with me tonight. That's wonderful. Yeah. Are you cooking for him? I am. Well, she is a fire. Maid. I've been practicing with the book you gave me. I was hoping to finally show him what I've learned. Then allow me to help. What are you making? She's probably making like the last of the pages, like the super. A warm stuff. soup full of meatballs. A hearty, meaty, savory stew to tickle the tongue and sate the stomach. <laughs> or so the book describes. A oh, meatball it. soup? That sounds interesting. I would try it. That sounds like quite a mouthful in more ways than one. The author is rather verbose, yes. Anyhow, verbose, I yes, also want course. to make an appetizer. Might you be able to lend a hand? Cooking is hardly my specialty, but say no more. I'd love to. Oh, yes, they're going to burn the tent down. That's a lot oh, of dishes. Dear. This is... Disappointing, to say the least. Yeah. And we're almost out of time. Sarah Noah will be back any minute now. Yeah. Excuse me, Lady Frederica. Mm. Lord Sarah Noah has just sent word that he has been held up at a meeting. Uh -huh. He says there is a chance he may not even return tonight. I see. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> it sounds like your dinner may get postponed. A blessing in disguise. It gives us time to cook this again and do it right this time. <laughs> Lord Sarah Noah may not even return tonight. She'll try and try but until she gets it. But there is a chance he might. 
And I refuse to disappoint him. Would you help me, Gila? Of course, Frederica. I shall do my very best to see this through with you. Oh, how wonderful for you. I cannot thank you enough. Hmm. Then they get food poisoning. It'd be funnier if there were like more dishes all the over the place. The vegetables are done. Though they are a far cry from perfect. The meatballs are ready too. Now all we have to do is stew them. Frederica, I'm back. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> it appears we've run out of time. I was on my way here when something urgent came to my attention. Oh? I apologize for returning so late. I know we were supposed to have dinner tonight. I am just happy you're here. Ruined everything. Besides, I am the one who should apologize. Why? I wanted to cook you a meal, but failed terribly on my first attempt. So it isn't yet ready. Don't apologize for that. I'm sorry, Saranoa. <laughs> That's a silly line. Don't look so down, Frederica. I was delighted when you asked me to share a meal. Now that I'm back, why don't I help you with the food? Oh, that's Sarah nice of Noah. you. That's how it should be. I mean, me and my wife love cooking together. It's, you know, it doesn't go perfect all the time. Thank you again for inviting me. I'm overjoyed we could spend this time together. As am I. Try. I enjoyed cooking with you as well. The time we spend together is very precious to me. You are to I be regret wed. that my duties have been keeping us apart lately. Mm. But when I noticed the sky was even more beautiful than ever this night. Oh, how nice. Oh, this is the urgent thing. Is it the moon? Do we get to see the moon? Oh, nice. That is a nice I hurried scene. home, hoping we could gaze upon its beauty together. That is a nice Strange. scene. When I was in Esfrost, I would look up at the same sky. It's true. But it felt so much colder there. The stars seemed as if frozen. They did not twinkle the way they do now that I am with you, Saranoa. Ooh. Frederica, <sighs> promise me that you will always stay by my side. Mm -hmm. I need you. Now more than ever. Hooray. Of course, Saranoa. I wish to gaze up at the same sky, sit beneath the same moon, and walk the same path you do. Hooray! Together, forever and always. Those sound like wedding vows. They're married. I now pronounce you man and wife. There you go. As much as some content creator can do that. Uh, that was all Frederica's stories. Okay. Erebor brushes off the subjects of Benedict's sought-after flower. Hmm. Hmm. Made it in time, my lord. Oh yes, yeah, Simon is still in a coma. You came. Lady Destra. Your mother was loved by one and all, my lord. Honoring her this day is the least we can do. Mm-hmm. Is it just you here, my lord? We are beset on all sides by tasks, large and small. I would not impose my familial obligations on the others. Oh, how nice for you. Spoken like a true leader. Me and your mother may not have been family by blood, but duty bound us just as close. I am sure she would have been overjoyed to see you by my side. Hooray. Bonding moment. I never had a chance to know her. My only memories are from stories others told me. And still, I somehow can feel the warmth of her embrace. Hear the loving sound of her voice. Hooray. She was smitten, that is true. She held on to you so tightly, I reckon not even the Dawn Spear could have pried you from her. <laughs> Did she? Lady Destra's smile was brighter than the sun. And near as constant. Oh. She treated young Benedict and I like little brothers. Though at times, we weren't so deserving of her care. Even so, she always had a kind word. 
and worry enough to spare. There weren't a woman like her in all of Narzelia. Nice. I did not know the bond between you three ran so deep. Benedict never mentioned it. His lips aren't as loose as mine, especially when it comes to Lady Destra. Hm. Speaking of which, here. Your mother would have loved to get one of these from you. Special flower? A snowbell. My father mentioned her fondness for these flowers. Mm. Every year when I visited her, without fail, one of these would be placed in front of her grave. Was that you all this time? Uh, well, not exactly, my lord. It was Benedict. They're quite rare, are they not? I often search for them, but I have yet to see one in bloom. Where did you find it? Ah, uh, well, I made a journey down south. Uh, Benedict insisted. Mm. Apologies for my absence, my lord. There is not to apologize for. It was a thoughtful gesture, and I thank you for it. I wish I could have seen like the flower. Somehow, they had, like, a little... I can no, feel a mother flower. smiling down upon us. <laughs> More than I deserve, if I'm being honest. Yeah, Benedict's the one who would find the or send him out to find the flower. There's already a snowbell. Oh, okay, so he already did put one. Should have known. Nothing will stop him from his duty. What was that? Hmm? Uh, there was nothing, my lord. Yep, yeah, that was from Benedict. Seems we're not the only ones carrying a torch for Lady Destra. Indeed. We are fortunate to be part of such a close-knit house. And that is thanks to those who serve it. I trust I'll see you here again in a year's time, Arador. Well, of maybe. course, my lord. Snowbells might capture a moment in time, but your mother inspired loyalty for an eternity. Oh, that's a nice sentiment. <coughs> All Erebor stories. Let's see what doing some training. Let's see what this is about. that are awfully yeah. close together. At it again, eh? You know, even the Dawn Spear set down his weapon on occasion. That lies. We're at war. I cannot hope to end it by being idle. <laughs> Spoken like a true member of the King's Guard. You lot were always too serious for my tastes. Uh -huh. We were not serious enough. Where is the king we were meant to protect now? What will become of his kingdom? Yep. <sighs> King Regna and Crown Prince Franny are no more. Only Roland and Cordelia remain. Mm -hmm. When I think of how lonely my charge must feel, I almost feel smothered by the guilt. If he's lonely, he hides it well. Could be that losing his princely obligations has lifted a weight off his shoulders. So if you don't know in, um, Traditionally, royal families, you had your king and then you had your crown prince. The reason why they would refer to them as the crown prince is because that was the one that was designated to take over should the king or queen uh, die or abdicate their throne. It was the next lineage uh, uh, link in their uh, reign over a certain uh, kingdom. But the subsequent other children were never referred to as crown princes. They were just referred to as princes uh, or princesses because that was their just designated title. You would still refer to them as your highness or your lord and things like that as the pleasantry side of things. But the uh, hierarchical uh, system was you had your king, your queen, and then you had your crown prince or crown princess. And the crown princess was used quite often for diplomatic uh, marriages and to employ uh, gain for the kingdom. Whereas the crown prince was assumed to be taking the throne over after the king passed away. But in, you know, true, uh, uh, human fashion. People wanted to have many heirs to the throne should they uh, succumb to any illnesses back in the day or assassination attempts back in the day. So they had multiple kids and those subsequent other kids besides the, uh, the older two or the two that were designated to take the throne after the king and queen would be referred to as the crown, crown prince and crown princess. And sometimes in rare occasions if the firstborn or eldest had some conditions that would uh, uh, bring dishonor to the family or uh, they felt were unfit for leadership, they would um, 
uh, exile that person, and the next in line would take the crown prince title. And who are you to speak on or his crown feelings? crown princess title, too. His father ever doted on Franny. He knew precious few moments of his mother's love before she passed. Even so, he tried his utmost to never show weakness in front of his sister. He was there for her in the worst of times. Mm. There was never a place near the throne for him. Truth be told, Sir Maxwell was more of a father to him than anyone. Really? I'd like to think I have been more than his guard. Oftentimes, I felt like his confidant. But he's dead, isn't he? I mean, I thought he was dead. Maybe in a different path you get him back or something. You and Flugi are constant companions. As I said before, my prince, he is more than my companion. He is the truest friend I could ask for. A true friend? I must admit, I envy your relationship. My prince, I did not mean to... <laughs> Tis nothing to apologize for. I simply find the idea of soaring the skies with a true friend to be somewhat... romantic. Mm -hmm. You could do the same with the proper training. If it pleases you, my prince, I would gladly teach you. Hmm. You would? Then I gladly accept. I trust you will go easy on me. I can promise no such thing. You must become as ferocious as a hawk yourself if you wish to ride one. Yeah, I would expect those things are like the size of men, if not bigger, to have people ride them. War broke out soon after that. My promise to teach him is yet unfulfilled. Mm. So I will train. I will fight. Until the skies are no longer clouded by the fires of war. Only then can I rest. Only then can we fly free. Hooray! Perhaps then, with the wind in our faces, we can forget our stations. Our titles. She's got a crush only on the just prince. for one okay. moment. Uh, what was that last part? You'll have to speak up. Nothing. Nothing at all. Yes, it's back to training for me. Oh dear. Alright, so we only got through three of them. So far. I'm gonna keep working through this, though. Skill reflects on both Frederica's growth and her own change over the years. Okay. It's become late. We best keep an eye out for bandits. You have a warrior's intuition. You needn't worry. I won't let us come to harm. Hooray. It takes no great intuition to see that this world is falling ever deeper into chaos. The reasons, however, remain elusive. Why? Will we see our way safely powers. through this darkness? I cannot say. Hmm. We have not but our duty, and mine is to Prince Roland, whatever might become of House Wolfort. I find your perspective That's refreshing. True. Although it may be direct, you walk the path you've chosen with confidence. On the other hand, I often feel that I'm fumbling. Why? I had thought Gustadov to be a man of reason. But now I see that he will not hesitate to employ deceit to achieve his goals. Oh, yeah. In a manner of speaking, he and I are not so different. I, too, once hoped to have the influence to change the nation. Really? At least, I told myself so. Really, all I wanted was to be free. And Frederica was simply a means to that end. Oh. As long as I had what I wanted, I had no great concern for what became of her. Gila, I... But this war has caused me to reconsider that. Hmm. I realize that Frederica herself is worth caring for. She's not the sheltered princess I took her to be. Her wits are a match even for Benedict. Wow. She surprised me and shamed me. I was wrong to underestimate her. 
to define her by her birth and station. Hmm. She represents my greatest failures as a teacher, but also my greatest success. For she has truly taken my lessons to heart. Oh. I see now there is no shame in serving another, and no shame in sacrificing my freedom for something greater. Okay. Oh, but perhaps I've shared over much. For some reason, I find it easy to talk with you. It's good to have connections. The feeling is mutual. You are not so aloof as I thought. I was gonna have a backhanded comment. Ah! I just had a thought. When the war is behind us, I may very well open my own school. Okay. Of course, you would be welcome to join me. I would be master of the classroom, and you could be master of the training yard. Huh. We could teach our students the art of hawksmanship. Our riders would be first class. Oh, jeez. Ah. What should our school be named? Oh, jeez. You will come and teach with me, won't you? Not half so aloof as I thought. Mm-hmm. Creating a school... Yeah, she has the connections to do it. Okay. Alright, connections. Uh, so, let's see here who else we have. Ah, Corentin. The research Corentin spoke of in his drunken stupor seemed to be making progress. Interesting. Okay. When Erebor got him drunk, if you remember. What's so Go back urgent and watch you that. can't let a man funny. sleep? Nothing less than the completion of my groundbreaking research, Eridor. Oh dear. Oh. Well now, that is something. <laughs> Indeed it is. I've managed to thermodynamically stabilize the quasi-liquid film forming on the surface of the... Thermodynamically stabilize the quasi-liquid film forming on the surface of the... Thermodynamics is heat and movement and pressure. So he stabilized that. So he stopped things from moving. Quasi-liquid is a pseudo-liquid film. So he made a solid not move on the surface of something. Yes, yes, I've heard all that. Now tell it to me in words a man can understand. Oh, there you go. <sighs> right, well, in layman's terms, I have created ice that never melts. Okay, that makes sense. See how simple... Did you say ice that never melts? That's mighty impressive and all, but... What actual good does that do anyone? Well, my if it dear, stays cold. sweet, simple Eridor. We can use my creation to forge weapons with no need for iron. Why? Sounds useful, if it works as you say. But how's the durability? Silly soldier. Do you take me for a fool? Of course I tested their durability. Worry not. So we get ice weapons? A prototype shall arrive shortly. I bid you try it out for yourself. For better or worse, you're the most experienced soldier I know. And so I'd have you handle it first. Another backhanded compliment. That sounds big and important. I reckon I'll take you up on it. Hooray! What news? Surely it's finished by now. Afraid not. I come bearing unfortunate news from the smithy. Eens. It seemed plenty sturdy at first, but shattered the moment he took a hammer to it. Uh. He says it has a long way to go before it can be used in place of iron, I'm afraid. Bummer. Preposterous! My calculations were impeccable. If you Surely so. I have not forsaken my homeline in pursuit of a fool's errand. That's all a bit dramatic, isn't it? You can't have a breakthrough without breaking a couple of ice blades. You know what would wash away all that pain? A nice cold glass oh of spirits. Oh my gosh, always thinking of drinking. Uh, spirits? That's it! That unmelted ice of yours could chill him forever, could it not? Crown-breaking indeed! This invention of yours could still take the world by storm. He just made a fridge. <laughs> and I reckon the army'd have use for it as well. It'd keep our rations from going off. <laughs> Weapons be damned. You've done very important work. The 
fact remains that my calculations were in error. So forgive me my reluctance to. Less sulking, more drinking. You succeeded, haven't you? Right then, this'll be my treat. And I won't be turning in till you do. Very well. Scientific breakthroughs never come easily, I suppose. Perhaps my next experiment shall be seeing how many rounds my everlasting ice can chill. There you go. Right then. To the encampment with us. Tis time for a drink or three. Airborne might have broken That's up when they could chew. Spirit. Just promise me I won't have to haul your drunken ass home this time. <laughs> so he made he made uh, uh, dry ice. That's what he made. He made CO2 ice. Okay. Uh, that was all Corentins. Julia, Lord huh? Serenoa, may I speak with you? About that noblewoman, yes? Eridor's told me what happened. Mm. Forgive me. I know that I should have waited for your orders before acting. But I could not leave that woman to her devices. So if you, for context, uh... Julio happened upon a noblewoman who was exploiting peasants, and he turned her over to the authorities without consulting Serenoa. The longer the war goes on, the more the people suffer. I imagine their feelings toward their rulers must be souring. In spite of this, that woman tried to use your name to wrest their food away. And she was doing it under the name of Wolford. Had we let her go free, people would have thought she was acting on your orders, and their mistrust of you would have only grown. Mm -hmm. I believed we had to show them that soldiers stand for justice and acted. I accept whatever punishment you deem fit. He gets a promotion. There will be no punishment, for you have committed no wrong. My lord. Anna looked into her. It seems that woman's ill repute dates back to her days in Glenbrook. Mm -hmm. Likely, she thought to obfuscate her misdeeds in the Crown City by hiding within my troops. Mm -hmm. She wasn't able to conceal her true self in the end. I suppose she thought to earn my favor with the stolen food. Yep. Unfortunately for her, she misjudged my principles. <laughs> Lord Serenoa. Forgive me for my oversight in this matter. I shall take all necessary precautions to ensure nothing like it happens again. There you go. So you aren't upset with me for throwing a noble woman in jail? Had I been in your position, I would have done the very same. There you go. For her misdeeds in Glenbrook and the crime you caught her committing, I shall order her banished at once. Mm, she will never be again be welcome in the Wolfort domain. Let it serve as a deterrent to any others who would prey upon the common people. It is rare that I meet someone so committed to holding those of high birth accountable for their actions. Well, that's why we got Julio in our ranks in the first place. I hope you will continue to do so. House Wolfort must be a house the people can trust. Of course, my lord. You have my word. I knew I made the right choice. Unlike Patriot, Lord Serenoa is a man worth serving. Yes, I finally found where I am meant to be. But I cannot rest on my laurels. Yes. I must serve my new lord as best I can. So Julio came to us from Patriot when the... Really early on, actually. That was all of Julio's stories. And then Eans, while, play, while paying a visit to a nearby village with Serenoa, Eans finally realizes what he can do as a blacksmith. All right. Let's see what you can do as a blacksmith. I mean, his title is engineer, but... This place was host to a battle not long ago, wasn't it? We have come here to help. Let us offer what relief we can. I never imagined the war would spiral this out of hand. It's war. Before it's the fighting was. started, all I cared about was becoming the realm's greatest blacksmith. I dreamed of forging the perfect weapon, a testament to strength. Yeah, but why? But what is strength, truly? Mm-hmm. Of late, I have pondered much on that question. And have you arrived at an answer? Well... There they are! Thanks, 
for the sweets you gave us. Hey, let's play a game. Very well. What shall we play? Apologies, Ienz. You may return. You needn't wait for me. Come on! Over here! What is strength? I believe I may have found my answer, Lord Saranoa. Courage. Kindness. Warmth that kindles a smile upon a child's face. The fortitude to keep fighting, no matter what trials you may face. Through it all, your heart remains unbent and unbroken. Mm -hmm. That is what will end this war. You, my lord, and the unmatched weapons you carry within you. Hey, you should play with us too! Uh -huh. <laughs> if you insist, here I come! You should build a playground. Some type of devices for the kids to play on. Swings. <laughs> Slides. That's all of Ian's stories. All right, Frederica hears the voices of the people as she walks the streets. Oh no, that's not. That's not what I want. We're on Narv. Oh, Narv. Narv heals an injured child when his grand when his grandfather. Okay. Yep. Damn it all. At this rate, I'll never come close to carrying on Grandfather's legacy. Maybe mm. I was never destined to be a great mage after all. Ow! Oh, it hurts! Quick, heal them! Oh no, the poor child's fallen. Hey there, are you hurt? Oh, it hurts so bad I can't even stand! But you're standing Not now. Worry. I'll fix you right I have up. Have a conversation with my so kids whenever they skin their knees. Uh, really? Yep. The pain will disappear like magic. You'll see. Hmm. Well, it is magic. Wow. It doesn't hurt anymore. Thank you, sir. Grandma, look! My leg's all better now! Well, I'll be. Thank you so much for healing my grandson. Yay! You don't need to thank me. This is nothing. Uh, th those robes... You wouldn't happen to be a student of the Archmage Grandante, would you? You know my grandfather? Oh, of course I do. What a great man he was. Always using his magic to help those in need, much like you. I was just one of many whose lives he saved. Why, that was over 30 years ago. Oh, that's nice. I lost my house to the fires of war and nearly my life along with it. Oh. But he quenched the flames with his spellcraft and healed my burns. Had it not been for the Archmage Grandante, I would not be here today. I am forever in his debt. Mm, that's a nice sentiment. Even though Grandfather's name was erased from Hyzant's records, his memory lives on in the people he helped. There you go. It sounds like he was a truly amazing man indeed. And I know he would be proud of you for following in his footsteps. <laughs> do you really think so? I do. <laughs> and I have no doubt that one day you will restore the glory to your grandfather's name. Darn right. He learned all the disciplines of spellcraft that we have in the game. He's got lightning, wind, fire, healing. Don't think he has cold. No matter what the ministry does to erase his existence, his spirit lives on through you. <laughs> right. But I must keep practicing, that I might help even more people with my spells. Just watch go. me, Grandfather. I'll restore the honor of your name if it's the last thing I do. Heal everybody till you pass out. So, of MP loss. Alright. 
Nice. All right, so that was all in our sto story. So we have two main story quests here. We'll save those for the next episode. I think that's going to be good. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else that we can do right now. Busy Gamer Dad, thanks so much for coming on the journey with me for uh, Triangle Strategy. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, um, this was just going to be the, the character stories and uh, finishing out those in our, uh, our, our queue, essentially. And I'll be posting some things on the uh, YouTube threads, comments, getting some uh, ideas out there for the next gameplay series that we have, because it looks like this one's wrapping up. Thanks so much for coming along on the journey with me. Hope you catch the uh, last few remaining episodes. Don't know how many they're going to be. Hope to see you there. Bye.